Hare Krishna, welcome to the Krishna Dairyan Way of Cooking. I am Radhika Pyari Devi Dasi and today I am going to share with you a beautiful Bengali Thali recipe. So this particular Thali I have made for the festival which is one of the greatest festival for the Gaudiya Vaishnavas which is the appearance day of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Keeping in mind all the Bengali recipes, I have attempted to create this entire Thali which looks really colourful and beautiful. Each of these recipes have their unique taste which adds up to this thali and they are pretty simple to follow. So let's look into the recipe. First thing I am going to prepare is the rice. Here I have taken around 1.5 cups of basmati rice. I have washed it very nicely. So around like 3 to 4 times I have washed it. And then once the water was a little bit clear, then I put it up for cooking. Make sure that you wash it several times so that the entire starch is out because this rice is going to be used into cooking for the pulao. So I emptied the washed rice into the pot and then I added water which would dip only one inch of the fingertip and then added a little bit salt. I just added around a teaspoon, not too much and then I mixed it. Now I have kept the heat on medium. I am going to let this rice first come to a boil. By that time in this big pot, I am going to add around 4 liters of milk. I will let it come to a rice on medium heat. So here I have soaked around a half cup of moong dal for around 2 hours on a medium hot water. Then I drained that water. And now I am going to add it in the mixi. We just want like a coarse paste, not completely blended, but a little bit coarse paste. Once that is done, then I am going to empty this in a bowl. Check out on the rice here. So this has come to a boil now I am going to cover it and reduce the heat to low and let it cook for around 5 to 10 minutes and then turn off the stove. So here I have some cumin seeds and fennel seeds. They are actually 1 tablespoon each and I am going to coarsely ground them. Now here I have put a wok. This is to make the filling because we are going to make kachoris. So here you see the rice is done. I'm going to just check if the rice is cooked nicely. So this looks cooked, so I'm just going to keep it like that. In the wok, I added a quarter cup of olive oil. And here I'm looking at the milk. It has come to a rice, so I'm going to add around two lemons full of juice. The heat was on high and then I reduced it completely. And now I'm stirring it. The stove. The wok stove is actually not on, I just have added the oil. So make sure you never add the oil and keep it on heat while you're doing some other work. So here the curdling has started because we are going to make rasgolas. Make sure the entire curd gets separated and there is only a transparent liquid which is the whey left behind. Now I'm going to use this uh, cheesecloth and I'm going to strain this entire thing. Now that whey which is left, you can use it for fermenting breads or you can just discard it. Also that whey can be used for buttermilk. Now here I have this entire curd which I made. What I am going to do is remove around quarter portion of the curdled mixture for sabji which we are going to make and the remaining part I am going to let it be in the cheesecloth. So I am not going to tie it now, it's very very hot so make sure that you tie it only after it cools down a little bit but I am going to remove a quarter portion of it with a spoon and keep it aside. So now here it has cooled down a little bit. I have removed already the quarter portion and I am going to just try to tie it. Even if you close it, not tie it, it's fine. Many times people also wash this curdle mixture. I don't find any difference with it, so I have not done that. So now this 
oil which is the olive oil is heated a little bit and I have added the cumin and fennel seed powder which I made and this is on complete low heat make sure the heat is not on high otherwise your spice will get burnt so this is on extreme low heat here is a teaspoon of turmeric and coriander powder and then cook it along with it then I'm going to add the moon paste now you can increase the heat little bit like on medium heat it's fine try to use a non-stick or an iron wok that is going to help with the cooking of this uh, inner filling for the kachori now adding around a teaspoon of dry mango powder which is called amchu powder and one and a half teaspoons of red chilli powder then i've added around a tablespoon and a half of sugar and then around half tablespoon of salt just mix it nicely now what you have to do is in between the low and medium heat you have to cook this moong paste making sure that the entire raw uh, smell of this particular moong is gone you will actually start noticing that in the texture itself It took me around 10 to 15 minutes to completely cook this moon. Now you can keep it a little bit sticky like this because as it is it's going to get fried or you can saute it and cook it until the entire rawness of the moon paste is gone. It's up to you. Now once the mixture starts separating like this, this is when I turned off the stove and then I garnished with cilantro. Adding cilantro is optional. Now I'm going to keep this aside and let it cool down and start preparing the other things. Now here I have around one and a half cups of uh, all-purpose flour. Now in this I have added around a quarter cup of rice flour. Then I added a little bit of salt, like around one teaspoon, and then I mixed it well. Now in this, I added around a tablespoon of lemon juice. And then around one and a half tablespoon of oil. Mixed everything nicely. Now you have to make sure that the entire flour mixes well with this lemon juice and the oil. The purpose of adding the rice flour is that it helps with your kachori to get nice and crispy and remain it like that for some time. So now I'm going to gradually add water. Now this kachori dough, it needs to be a little stiff. By the same time, it should not be so stiff that it will be difficult to bind it. What I do is, I do not use any kneading equipment. I just do it with hand because it makes things easy and you can understand the texture of it. So once that is kneaded the particular way, then I just covered it and kept it aside. Now here, I'm going to show you a sabji recipe. So I have added around a quarter cup of poppy seeds. Now in this, I added uh, one teaspoon of mustard seeds and then half teaspoon of white mustard seeds now I'm going to add around two to three tablespoons of coconut and then add a little bit of water to it to soak it for around 15 to 20 minutes now that rice which was cooked we are going to start preparing it now this is actually the Navratna pulao which we are going to make there are beans peas and carrots the peas I have already boiled now I'm adding here a quarter cup of ghee. You can use olive oil, not a problem. I'm going to let it heat nicely. I've used some whole spices like bay leaves, cinnamon, black pepper, star anise and cardamom. 
even cloves i have used two to three quantities that's it so i've added them first i'm going to saute them on medium heat and then i added two bread dry chilies nicely saute them after sorting it if you want to remove these spices that's not a problem but for the appearance of the rice these spices look good so now i'm going to add a handful of raw cashews and i'm going to saute them on low heat again once they turn a little bit of golden like this then i'm going to add the veggies now this carrots sometimes in india you can get those reddish looking carrots if you find those carrots then you can use that that actually adds an extra sweetness to the pulao now here i added some beans the quantity for them is half cup each just stir it cook it nicely now in this i added the boiled peas the boiled peas were around 1 cup now this can be done on medium heat now I'll start adding the cooked rice so you see how the rice has become separated nicely so what you do is always use less water for cooking this kind of rice so that your rice will be nicely separated one of the tip is also that if you want to add a little bit of oil to your rice that will also help with the separation so slowly slowly i am going to add the rice i am not going to rush into it i'm going to give it a very nice stir make sure all the veggies they are mixed together with the rice the heat is on medium now i'm going to add around a quarter cup of raisins which is also known as kishmish and i'm going to mix that i'm going to add salt there was already some salt in the rice when i had cooked so i added only around a half tablespoon of salt more and then i added around 1 and 1/2 teaspoon of white pepper powder you can use black pepper powder but i did not want it to affect the appearance of the rice that's why i used white pepper now cover it and cook it for 10 minutes on very low heat now here i have added in a wok quarter cup of oil and then i am going to fry these egg plants now this egg plants i had already sliced into four portions the other rice is done and i am going to turn off the stove and keep it aside now those big eggplants i had divided them into like four parts and fried them in the wok now if you have a bigger wok you can do all the four of them but if you don't then you can do two at a time i just made sure the entire eggplants are fried nicely now here i have pointed god now they are also called as padwal or podal and they are used especially in bengali cuisine like the sabjis so i'm going to nicely peel and then i'm going to after peeling divide it into half like do not divide it completely just make a score in between remove the top and the bottom portion like this and just divide it going half way through that's it So that's eggplant the reason why we are frying it is because uh, it will reduce the cooking time and same we are going to do with this pointed god as well you can find these uh, vegetables if you are not living in india easily in indian markets so this is how i fried those eggplants and i'm going to add a little bit of more oil or ghee and then i'm going to fry the remaining ones you can also add a little bit of turmeric powder to this a uh, eggplant just for the color purposes but make sure your eggplants are fried well it took me around like 10 minutes to fry both the eggplants so now this oil which i have taken in that same oil i'm going to also fry the padwal in the same manner 
This has to be on medium heat. Now just remove it and keep it aside. Now in this pan, I have taken around 3 tablespoons of mustard oil. Whenever you use mustard oil, make sure it is little bit heated so that the fumes are seen. That will remove the rawness of the mustard oil and then it will not be an intense flavor. So once my oil gets little bit heated, then I will start adding the spices. First, one and a half teaspoons of cumin seeds and then two chilies slit, then a little bit of hing, which is called asafoetida. And now I'm going to saute it. This is on low heat. With the help of a mortar paster, I actually minced the ginger and I have added around 2 tablespoons of it. This should be sauteed on low heat. Now a teaspoon of turmeric powder. Now I have added around 1 and a half teaspoons of Kashmiri red dry chilli powder. This has more colour than the spiciness. Now here I have added 1 teaspoon of garam masala powder and then nicely mixed it. Now I am going to add around 3 medium sized chopped tomatoes. Mix nicely. Little bit sprinkle of water. Cover it and let it cook to get it softened. Again, little bit of water. You can see the tomatoes are already getting soft. Now I'm going to cover it and let the tomatoes get more soft. Remember I talked about those curdled mixture of the milk which I removed aside. It was for this purple sabji which I had removed aside. So nicely it has separated. So I am going to use this. And for the rasgullas that remaining portion is here. So now these tomatoes look completely done. Nice and soft. Now I'm going to add around a tablespoon of salt. Just two teaspoons of sugar. Now I'll add this curdle mixture. This is actually called paneer and this is actually crumble paneer. If you do not want to go through this whole process, you can just buy ready-made paneer and you can do it. But I think there is a different flavor to the fresh paneer we make at home. So now I'm going to add around two and a half cups of water to this entire thing. Cover it and let it come to a boil first. Now here I have this grinder, you remember that soaked things which we had put, I am going to add that and I am going to make a nice paste out of it. This is actually going to be used for the eggplant sabji. I added two chilies and made the paste out of it.
paste is ready. I'll keep this paste aside. Now let's check up on the sabji. Okay, it has started boiling. Now I'm going to reduce the heat to low and then add the parvel or the pointed card in it. After you add it, keep it on low heat, cover it and cook it for around 15 to 20 minutes. In this skillet, I added around two and a half teaspoons of mustard oil. Let it fume a little bit. Now in this sabji, I am going to use a little bit of nigella sativa, which is actually one teaspoon of it. This nigella sativa is also known as kalonji. It is often misunderstood as onion seeds, which is not true. The botani is completely different and it actually has a flavor like oregano so in the stores you will actually get kalonji or nigella sativa which is actually not onion seeds so i added one teaspoon of turmeric powder and the paste which i made now the heat is on medium and i have to continuously stir that paste because you want to make sure that it doesn't stick too much at the base otherwise it will get burned Keep on stirring it nicely until it's dry, little bit dry. And if you want more information on the Nigella sativa, then I have also put about it in my book if you have a copy of it. And if you don't, then you can get a digital copy or a paperback copy of it. So see, this is getting a little bit dry. Now I'm going to add around a quarter cup of yogurt. Make sure that the yogurt is like full fat it doesn't have to water or whey now reduce the heat to low and mix this yogurt nicely now in this add around a teaspoon of sugar and a teaspoon of salt mix it well add water to it now you can add around one and a half cups of water or two cups of water. Eventually this entire watery mixture will get dried when the eggplants get cooked in it. So I'm going to add the fried eggplants to it. These eggplants are partially cooked because of the frying. So it won't take that much time for them to cook into this gravy. The most important thing is that the flavor of the paste or the entire gravy should get absorbed by the eggplants and there should not be any raw flavor left in it. I'm going to pour a little bit of this mixture on top of the eggplants too. Just a little bit. Cover it and cook it for around 5 to 10 minutes. I am going to check up on this pointed card. I think it still needs a little bit of cooking for around 5 minutes more. So I am going to wait. By that time I am going to check on this eggplant. So I am going to add one green chilli. And see the eggplants have actually absorbed the liquid. And it has also thickened a little bit. This is exactly what we want. This dish of uh, eggplant is actually called as Began Basanti. Very famous and common dish in the Bengali cuisines. This is actually one of the dish also used or made during Durga Puja like for the pure vegetarian recipes. So here my pointed card also looks cooked. So many times this uh, paneer people use very less quantity. I have used around like three fourth cup of it. So just that's just my personal choice. And then I added some cilantro or coriander leaves for garnish and turned off the stove and kept this aside. Now I'm going to make sada alu tarkari. This is also one of the very famous Bengali cuisine. This is actually called Panch Poran Spice, which are the blend of five whole spices, fennel seeds, cumin seeds, nigella sativa, mustard seeds and fenugreek seeds. The quantity of fennel and cumin needs to be one teaspoon each and the remaining as half teaspoons. 
and I'm going to use this into this mustard oil. So once the oil is a little bit hot, then I'm going to add the spices to saute. First, I will add two red dry chilies, then the spices, nicely saute it. Now I'm going to add a little bit of asafoetida. And now the chopped potatoes, I have taken two big potatoes and I have chopped them into the cube sizes. Nicely stir them with the spices. Now I am going to add around half tablespoon of salt. Mix it nicely. Add around a cup of water to it. After adding the water, I am going to add two green chilies to it. Cover it with a lid, bring it to a boil. Once the boil happens, then you reduce the heat to low and let the potatoes get cooked completely. Now let's start with the process of rasgullas, which is also called as rasgullas in Bengali. So this is the curdled milk mixture, which actually uh, was tied in that cheesecloth. Nice and dry it got. Now, the key to make a nice squeaky rasgullas are actually the kneading part of it. Whenever I make rasgullas, it actually takes me around 15 minutes to knead this chenna or this curdle mixture. Why it is that? Because this entire mixture needs to be nicely kneaded with our palms that will result into a good texture for the rasgullas. So if you can go like lower the height of this uh, entire container and then knead it, then it will be easy. So you see how I am squeezing, then I am sliding and everything. It's because that rasgulla needs to be done it in that manner. So here my potatoes are boiled. Now I'm going to reduce the heat to low. Just check it, it's a little bit cooked. So I'm going to let it be covered again and cook it on low heat. Now here, let's check up on this boiling water. I had actually added around 4 liters of water and in that added around 5 cups of granulated sugar. Now this sugar is not like the crystal sugar which we get in India, so that's why I had to use so much. But if you're using that thick crystal sugar, then you'll need less quantity. You just need a little bit of the sugar syrup. And once that sugar syrup is cooking, I'm going to keep on kneading this chenna. So I'm trying, you see, in between rolling it to see if the balls are made without much cracks. That is a purpose. And also, you'll know that your mixture of this chenna is ready for the rasgullas once it starts releasing oil on your palms and i'll show you how it will start releasing oil going to knead it knead it now first check up on my sabji this looks completely cooked I'm going to add a little bit of cilantro, mix it, turn off the stove and keep it aside. Now I tried rolling one of the mixture and it actually rolls good. So you see how sticky it has got. 
Also, you can look at my palms. They have become a little bit shiny. It's actually the oil from the from the chana or the cheese. You have to start making the balls out of it. Make sure that these balls, when you are rolling them, they don't have much cracks because as soon as they have a lot of cracks, when they go into the sugar syrup and start cooking, they are going to get separated and your rasgullas won't be round and they will get all dispersed into the liquid. So now I'm going to check on the syrup. You see, it has become a little sticky. You don't want a very thick syrup. You just want a little bit sticky like this. That's the purpose. So I had taken so much water and see the half quantity of it has reduced completely. So now I'm going to add the balls in it. And this heat is actually on high and after adding the rasgullas, I'll reduce the heat and cover it and cook it. This is only for 10 to 15 minutes you have to do. Now here is the kneaded dough for the kachuris. They are nice and soft. So I'm going to take a little bit of flour on my palms and then I will knead it one more time. Now take a portion. Like this. Now dust a little bit of flour on it. Roll it until certain diameters like around the size of your palm. And that mixture which we made for the kachoris, add that. Be very generous in adding the kachori mixture because the kachori tastes good when the filling is a lot inside. So it becomes so easy to close it, you see. It's because the dough is not too tight and not too soft. So I'm just going to press it a little bit with a rolling pin. Just to evenly spread the kachori mixture in it. And I'll place this kachori on this parchment paper. Like this, I will be making all the remaining kachoris in similar manner. Again, I'm repeating, make sure that the dough is not very soft. At the same time, it's not too stiff. It should be stiff enough that it can be crispy and it should be soft enough so that it can close all the sides of it properly without the kachori opening. You see, it's not taking me much effort to close it. It just closes it so nicely. Now, during the time when this kachoris I'm rolling, I have also kept oil to heat in a wok. The time when we are actually making so much food together, it's always best to use the same utensils and keep on intervals washing them so that we do not have a pile of lot of utensils left behind to wash. So what I did was that I was using one same wok continuously, just washing them. So this will be like my last use of that wok. I will be frying things in them. One is the kachori and there will be puris and then also there will be pakoras. Now the oil needs to be heated first and then the heat should be reduced to medium. The kachori doesn't need an extremely hot oil because we want the kachoris to cook on medium heat so that gradually it becomes crispy. Now check up on the rasgullas, see how nice and they are completely bigger in size like round and big and how lovely they look. So this is the purpose actually, it's been 15 to 20 minutes and the rasgullas look done. I'll actually also show you the texture of this rasgullas. So I'll turn off the stove and keep it aside and here my oil is hot, I'm going to try a little bit of dough in it. So once this dough, it starts rising up properly, 
that's the time I know that the oil is ready. So I'll start putting three kachoris at a time. Make sure that the kachoris are not too much clouded. Otherwise, while flipping, either the oil will splash on you or it will go underneath the element and cause panic. It happens with me a lot. So that is why I'm suggesting. Make sure that you turn it over at intervals so that only one side of the kachori should not be cooked. Both the sides should be evenly cooked. Slowly, slowly you will see that the kachoris are rising. They are becoming puffy and they are becoming crispier. You see here too. This is exactly what you want. Whenever I cook kachoris, all I remember is Srila Prabhupada because how much Srila Prabhupada loved it. So kachori is, they just hold so much uh, close connection for me because I really love thinking about Srila Prabhupada when I'm making kachoris. So these kachoris have nicely risen and also they are crispy. Once this batch is fried, then I'll add the remaining batch. The total time which was required to fry these kachoris was around 10 minutes. Now in this bowl, I have taken the syrup which was used for cooking the rasgullas. I've added that. Now this is a trick actually. When you want your rasgullas to be more spongy because the sugar syrup when it gets cooled down, it actually crystallizes and it can make your rasgullas a little harder. So what you can do is you can boil a little bit of water and let it come to a full like a room temperature and that water same quantity you can add to it now what i did was i added around three portions of the syrup and then one and a half portion of the water to it so that actually helped and then i added the rasgullas because already the rasgullas have taken the sweetness of the syrup and there is already syrup there so adding that cooked water will be helpful when it goes into the fridge it will not crystallize too much and will not get harder now i've also used kevra this is very famous in indian sweets you buy a vegetarian version of it with an isi mark like this and this kevra just use around one to two drop this gives a very aromatic and floral flavor to your sweets especially these milk sweets so i have added that After adding it, I just stirred it nicely. Now these rasgullas, I am going to keep them in the fridge just for them to get chilled. These are one of the best ekadashi rasgullas you can get. Now let's start with the pakoras. I have taken some cauliflower, then around half tablespoon of salt. After adding that, I have taken equal portions of turmeric powder dry mango powder, red chilli powder and garam masala powder. Now I have added around 1 to 1 and a half cups of chickpea flour which is also called as chane kata. Depending on how thick you want the batter, you can add the water. Depending on how thicker you want the pakoras to be, you can add that much chickpea. But one cup is general. Now generally batter is made and then the vegetables are added. And I did in this manner because this texture is also very crispy. I like this way as well. Here I have taken around one and a half cups of wheat flour. I'm going to make puris here. So around one cup of wheat flour. Then 2 tablespoons of uh, semolina, which is also called as suji or rava. Now in this I am going to add around a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of sugar. The reason why we add sugar, sugar helps with the nice puffy puris and also with the soft and the crispy texture of it. Then I added around a tablespoon of oil to it, mixed everything nicely. Now here I used cold water. So you want a little bit stiff uh, 
dough for the puri as well. Nicely kneaded. This took me five minutes. Take water gradually. So here my dough is ready. I'm going to cover it with a damp cloth and keep it aside. Now here the oil is hot for the pakoras. Make sure that the oil is on medium heat and not too much extremely hot. You want the cauliflowers to be cooked too. Cook the pakoras for around 5 to 7 minutes until they look little golden brown. I repeat again, please fry these pakoras on medium heat, not on high heat. Otherwise, the cauliflowers will be uncooked and the outside texture will get too dark. So I touch and see it, whether it's cooked nicely or not. And this is done, so I am removing it in a nice uh, absorbent cloth and then putting it in a bowl. So now the puri atta has risen. I kept it aside for like 15 minutes while I was frying my pakoras. So I'm going to divide it equally like this. Start making the puri by rolling it around the size of your palm and now for this puris we need the oil extremely hot the puris when the oil is not too hot then they don't puff that well and that happens with me i kind of seem to forget that so when it happens then i remember and then i just make sure that the oil is hot again So you do not need to cloud the puris like how I did here. So after this, I just did one puri at a time. Now these puris are ready. This was actually the last phase of the cooking, which was near to be completed. And now we are going to make the serving. So the first thing I'm going to add is the vegan basanti. You see that the curry or the thickness of it has become so nice. It has just mixed nicely with the eggplant. Here is the gravy. Now these are the kachoris. See how nice and crispy they are still. And then this is the rice. Nice colorful rice. Then I added the sada aloo tarkari, simple aloo, and then the puris. Here are the pakoras. Now here see the rasgullas. I told you to that I will be showing you the texture. So see how squeaky they are. That's what we want with the rasgullas. So kneading is the key. Going to add the rasgullas. And then our last sabji, which is the pointed guard or the padwal or the portal sabji. And finishing it up by placing a tulsi leaf and offering it at the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. Thank you so much for watching. Hare Krishna.